Mr. Brophy, I want to get us back on an even keel. You know, back to normal. What are we doing here, anyway? Hobnobbing with the rich and famous, my friend. Well, this place ain't so special. You kidding? I'd sell me soul to have a place like this. You are a sight for sore eyes. Come with me. Okay, you're all in one piece. You look good. What's your name? Lorna Kelly. What's yours? Oh, you don't know. I'm not like other girls, Liz. You're not taking advantage. I would never do that. Liz is my fella, but he's also a pickpocket, a sly grogger, and my pimp. No, I don't believe you. We love each other and we're getting married. And I'm having his baby. So I got your blessing. Oh, a million times over. You two are a match made in heaven. We're going to start a war between Long Harry and Starks. And then we'll take over this town. The Fitzroy vendetta was over. Long Harry Slater refused to testify against Henry Stokes. Released on bail, he fled to Sydney. Stokes was found guilty of discharging a firearm in public. His six-month sentence was suspended, provided he too leave the state of Victoria. So Henry and his wife packed up their belongings and sailed back to Tasmania. And who did he leave in charge of his empire? You guessed it. Would you like to choose a fabric now, Mr. Taylor? Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, fond of something with a stripe, Leo. It makes uh, a man look... Uh... Taller. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Taylor, sorry, I, I meant... No, makes a man look more powerful, Leo. Yes, Mr. Taylor, it does. <clears throat> Happy is the man who findeth wisdom. Happy is the man who findeth himself boss of the wash with a shitload of dosh, says I. I'm king of the castle, and all the dirty rascals out there are doing my bidding. God bless them all. Trust you're having a good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hi. Hey. Your Honour, what a pleasure to meet you. Come here, we'll have a photo. From here on in, it's only the finest for me. Finest food, clothes, cars, house, best of everything. Let's get four champagnes for these lads on the house. Thank you. So who knows what's around the corner? A war, Spanish flu, there could even be a bullet with my name on it. What's Lady Luck's maiden name? Well, it's Miss Fortune, of course. <laughs> Here on in, live in clover. Because when you're dead, you're dead all over. Stokes wants an update on our financial situation. What are you going to tell him? That we're going great guns. Just had a few out of pocket expenses. Like the new car, the parties, and the clothes? You don't have to worry about Stokes. He's not back for months. And when he does come back, I'm going to have to jack so far up his ass they'll be brushing his teeth. After all, it's the hottest betting club in town. What about Stokes's boys? Oh, boss, we got a problem. We caught him red-handed with a pocket full of aces. <laughs> no one likes a cheat, Cecil. I wasn't cheating. Shut the fuck up. Shh, 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 shh. Now I could give you a stern warning and let you go. Thank you. But then that would make me look weak as piss. And for someone in my position, that's a dangerous thing. <laughs> so I'm going to make sure the whole of Melbourne knows how I deal with cheats. <laughs> Thank you. Les. Les. You're having a baby.
Hello, darling. Because she's tiny. Oh, she felt big enough coming out. Unless she looks like you. couple of breasts quick smart and give her a feed if she's hungry. <sighs> now, Leslie, two things. She tore downstairs a bit, so she's going to need some time to mend. You understand? Yeah, what's that got to do with me? I know men have certain needs, so you're going to have to do the washing by hand until she's better. I don't do the washing. Well, you will now, young man, if you want to get the dirty water off your chest. Yeah. Do you understand? I do, me? yeah, yeah. Good. Come on. It's time to step up and provide a roof over your family's head. You're a good boy. I know you'll make your mother proud. When we want to love, when we love. When we want to kiss, we kiss. With a little petting, we're getting some fun out of life. When we want to work, we work. Oh, you don't have to worry about that, Lorne. But I do worry less. Well, don't. In a happy setting, we're getting some fun out of life. Maybe we do right. It's a man's job to be the breadwinner, right? It's his job to do whatever he has to do to put food on the table and keep a roof over the head of his wife and kid. None of her business how he does it. Just like it's none of his business if Monday night's corned beef or shepherd's pie. The way I see it, marriage is about supporting each other through thick and thin and not asking stupid bloody questions that are just likely to upset me. Yes, yes. You're sure? We had to cut back on some expenses. Les hopes you understand. Sleepy. More hocus pocus, Fred. Science, John. It's the future. It's not my future, mate. You want to do yourself a favour? Turn up the heat on the Stokes place in Richmond. Give that little turd Squizzy some grief. Last time I did that, I copped a kick in the balls for my trouble. So I reckon he's got friends in high places. Not anymore, he doesn't. Smile for the birdie. The police! Nobody moves! Stay where you are! We're under arrest, little man. You can't do this to me. Can't I? Do you know who I am? Miss Squizzy Taylor. Jumped up shrimp. A nobody. I'm the fucking king of Melbourne. You're the king of nowhere, mate. job. Don't you want your daughter to grow up proud of her dad? I manage a high-class establishment. You sell sly grog and run an illegal gambling house. You've just been beaten up and arrested for goodness if sake. If you saw the number of lawyers and judges who come into my club for a drink and a flutter. Doesn't make it right, Les. And since when is it your club? Where's June? I wish 
should have been there. Bruce is his own man. Well, then what am I paying you for? You're getting a flight there in the courts, aren't you? I shouldn't be in the courts, Jack. I wouldn't be complaining if I was you. You've only got yourself to blame. So you didn't get a good look at the bomber? No. First concern was for my wife and family. Of course. Where are they now? Winnie's taking the children to her sisters. Your wife, she said she saw someone lurking around the place earlier on. Yes, but I've already spoken to her. She can't identify him. The bomb was apparently a tin packed with gelignite and nuts and bolts. Anyone hurt? Miraculously, no. Heard the blast from my place. How much damage? Detective Bruce's place is blown to bits. Fucking hell. When might I get a chance to talk to your wife? I just told you she can't identify him. Not consciously, but I'd like to try to put her under hypnotic trance. Jesus. Look, Brophy, the Bureau of Investigation in the United States has had great success in the area. We need evidence, we, witnesses. We can always try the old-fashioned way. Bust a few heads instead of trying to get inside them. Well, we were at a temperance meeting until 10, and then we came home and went to bed. Temperance meeting? Amazing the roof didn't fall in. What about after that, around 1 o'clock this morning? Oh, well, now you've got me there, detective. I was up and about. Doing? Making a bomb, of course, to blow you and your loved ones Liz, to Liz, you bits. shouldn't say such no, That's what he's accusing me of. I Liz. can vouch for my husband, detective. I was up feeding June, our baby daughter. Les got up and made me a cuppa. A dutiful husband that I am. I looked at the clock. It was about ten after one. Thank you, Mrs Taylor. I'm just glad to hear your family is safe, detective. It must be terribly distressing for your wife. Yes, it is. <clears throat> You're gonna have to pull your head in, sunshine. He's not gonna intimidate me. Now listen, Jim. No, you listen. I've made... No, I... you listen. My wife's sister gave me a white feather during the war for not enlisting. Well, she's a stupid cow, because you're a copper, essential service. Doesn't matter. Not when every other man in the family went off to fight. Her husband, her son. I keep that with me as a reminder for how important it is for me to do my duty as a police officer. That's very noble. Now, what about the safety of your wife and kids? Does that come first? I think you should get off gambling and slow grog for a while, take on other jobs. You can still be a good copper, do it for them. I've left my bloody hat in there. Think about what I said, Jim. I'm heading out, Lorne. I won't be long, all right? Hey, you listen to me, you little turd. 
You do not send blokes with bombs around to coppers' houses. You do not make threats to coppers' families. Is that understood? Is he gonna back off? He is. For now. Then we're apples. No, we're not apples. Any arrangement we've had is over. Finished. Well, you're trying to squeeze me another five and run shit. I'm not asking you. Just right. try it, Jack. I've dropped bigger blokes than you. Where's? Just forgot my hat, Mrs. Taylor. Good day to you. What? Got his hat. Seriously. What's his problem? Ah, if we were gonna kill him, we would've used a bigger bomb. He's a cop tank. You can't expect him to use his brains. Someone's here. been going on? Henry, why didn't you tell me you were coming back? You've had your hand in the till. I had to blow your little tits off. Oh, from where I'm standing, looks like Tank and I have got you out, Gunt. Not from where I'm standing. All right. All right, come on. Fine, let me explain. Don't try and talk your way out of it, you little shit. Henry, come on. Get out of my sight before I blow your fucking balls Henry. off. Get out! Henry. Get out! And don't think this is over for one moment. It's not! I've never seen you handle a gun like that before. No. I thought you'd like that. Well, I certainly did. What are we going to do, Liz? Liz! Fuck it. You know I was going to shoot them. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You got every reason to be angry at me. Let me have it. What? Hit me. What? Hit me. And he packed quite a punch. <coughs> Fuck! Thank you. You've got no idea what it's been like, Henry. Bruce has been giving us a furious time. That yeah. prick. We bombed his house. Who yeah. thought that was a good idea? It was huh? risky. But... You bring all the jacks in Melbourne down on us, you idiot. No, Bruce is going to back off for the good of his family. It's a win, Henry. So what, you go and buy yourself a big new house, a flash new car, all with my money? Yes, I did. Because, mate, I'm representing you. I had to look the part. Didn't expect us back early, did you, Les? I can't say I did, Annie. You think I was going to give you time to organise a welcome home party? Come on, Henry. I didn't get to where I am by being outsmarted by the likes of you, Les. You've got me all wrong. But a welcome home party sounds like a cracker of an idea. I'd like to have you two as the guests of honour at a big lavish do at my place just to show you how much you've been missed. As long as it's with your money, not mine. <laughs> yeah, very funny. <laughs> what do you say? Fuck Henry Stokes. I'm sick of that place anyway. Those boys like having their boss back. They're yeah, dumb pricks. He gave them bonuses to keep them staunch. Now, um, what do you want me to do with these photographs? Tank, we're destined for bigger things. Much bigger things. Look out, you bastards. Now I want you to relax, Winifred. Just breathe in and breathe out. You're getting sleepy, you can hardly keep your eyes open. You're falling into a deep, deep sleep. Is she, um... I don't believe she is. Good Lord. I've done it. Winifred? Can you hear me? 
Yes, I can hear you. I'm taking you back. You saw a man outside your home on the evening of the bombing. You remember him? Yes. Excellent. Now I want you to describe him to me. In every last detail. He was a tall man with blonde hair. Oh. Oh, sorry what for happened? the intrusion. How's the hocus pocus coming along, Fred? We're gonna have to begin again. Yes? No, I didn't like it. Please. Mrs. Bruce, you were just about to give us a description of the bomber. No, I don't think it's proper for a Christian lady. I'm leaving. Sorry, Fred. Never would have held up in court anyway, Fred. Christ, it's dark in here. Well, there's there's archers, Macintosh, and the rail yards. Yeah. Right, it's easier to move and harder to trace, and the good stuff, it's like spun fucking gold. We're off. You are? Oh, you yeah, have a good day, my darling. Yeah. Hey? You'll be a good girl for Mummy, won't you? <laughs> She's always a good girl, Dad. You have a good day, too. We will. We will. Bye, Bert. Bye. Mum's in a good mood. Yeah, I told her I'd start looking for a legit job. Really? Oh, an honest job. What would I do? I'd probably become a watchmaker. I'd really love to do a that. A tank? I said I'd do it because it's what she wanted to hear. Right, yeah, so you're not serious. You're not really thinking about it. Well, I actually did for a bit. But then I'd rather kill myself than live a boring life now. I have to say, I love a nice piece of fabric. Chinese silk, a lovely bit of crepe de chine. Even a yard of quality tweed gets me going. It all started when I was a babe in arms, I suppose. I can still remember me mum giving me a scrap of crushed velvet to play with to keep me quiet. handprint taken from the rail yard robbery. What's that supposed to tell us? That one of our crooks has at least one hand. The size of the print would indicate that the thief was of diminutive stature. Let's drag him in. Hang on, hang on. What more do you want? A whole lot bloody more. So one of our crooks is a short ass. So what? Could be Squizzy, might be a kid. I know a hundred kids that'd fit that bill. It's Squizzy Taylor. What if it's a Sheila? It's not a bloody woman, it's Squizzy Taylor. Didn't you hear him? He's there got a is nothing handprint. I would like more than to lock him up for keeps, but he has no form in warehouse robberies. Who's to say he's not broadening his horizons, Brophy? I say we take a harder look at him. Good luck. I've got a very urgent appointment at the pub. Of course you do. <laughs> Jax, run for it! No, Ed, you can't leave me shit. Come here, mate. Get, come here. Oh. Hey. Looks like we found lovers lanes, Frank. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Finish up there and move along. Mm -hmm. Temperance people, why? There was a story about you in this afternoon's paper. Have you seen it? No. Oh, God, look at that photo. That's awful. That's why they asked. 
asked me to leave, you oh, bastard. No, no, come on. Now, you said you'd given all of that up. Oh, I said I wasn't running Stokes's place. But anymore. you've got a respectable job. Which now. unfortunately doesn't pay as well. But what about what's right? Oh. What about doing what's right for me in June? I've lost my friends. I've lost all of oh, my friends. Oh, you've got plenty of friends, right? We're having a party here Friday night. You're going to make plenty of new ones. I won't come down. Yes, you will. No, I won't. Yes, you will, and that's the end of it. Right, we've got to put on a good turn for the Stokes, otherwise it's going to end very badly. And what does that mean? Just what I said. I've seen the way that woman looks at you and it's not decent! You're imagining things, Lorna. Hey, get, get my scrapbook. Too much for you, Henry. <clears throat> so have you had any more trouble from the Jacks lately? No. Good. Good, I'm glad to hear. So we're back to business partners? Partners, Liz. We have fifty percent discount on the grog supply until you've paid your debt. That sounds fair and equitable, doesn't it? <laughs> Check Justice so tall, fondling that girl. <laughs> no. mm. Wouldn't have thought this was to your wife's taste, Les. Oh no, you'd be surprised. Mm. Where is she anyway? Out banging the temperance drum? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, she's having a lie down upstairs. Oh, not the flu, I hope. No, 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 nothing contagious. Oh, a migraine. <sighs> <laughs> I'm going to get another one of these. Oh, Lorna, it's only me, Bert. Can I come in? Yes. Les, he, um, he asked me to come up and see how you were. He couldn't come himself? He's in the middle of things, being the host with the most and everything. Of course he is. I bought you some brandy. I don't drink. I know. It's um, for medicinal purposes, you know. But... Annie, you're missing the show. Oh, well. Some like to watch, some have other preferences. Hmm. Well, I hope you're enjoying yourself. Oh, I'm having a ball. When I met Les, I, I had no idea who he was or what he did. I know. See, I, I just want him to be a better person. He is the truest mate I've ever had. He's a criminal. I'm a criminal. You grew up where we grew up. You'd do whatever you had to do to get out. Tell Liz I won't be down this evening. I hope you feel better soon. Thanks, Bert. Flushed. 
Oh, I am. I've been running around like a blue-ass fly. You should see it down there. It looks spectacular. It's like a Roman palace. No, it's, 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 it's very sophisticated, though. There's all the rage in Europe. They're a very posh crowd. Come on, come, come downstairs with me. And I promise you from the bottom of my heart that I will be a better man. for speechifying, but uh, I'd, I'd actually like to make a very public welcome home to my dear friends, Henry and Annie Stokes. And, and I'd like to present them, I'd like to present them with a gift just to show my boundless affection and high esteem for you both. Raymond, let's get a, let's get a photo in here to capture this for posterity. Those coats have been in our family for generations. You're telling me these weren't given to you by Squeezy Taylor. I put it to you that they were stolen from Edward Love and Company, Chapel Street, South Yarra, three nights ago. Pig's ass. Prove it. I have every intention of doing just that. Bloody pig, it who'd have thought? You should have, you show pony. Yeah. Gotta admit, Henry, it was a lovely photograph. What's the idea of giving us stolen property in the first it place? It was quality merchandise, which I'll happily replace. With mink. With mink, done. Oh, we should have given you up. Well, I'm very grateful that you didn't. We didn't, because I want to kill you myself. Wait, 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 boy, for boy, stop it! Les is gonna fix this, aren't you, Les? You have my word, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Just, just leave it with me, all right? That's right. Here it is. Scheduled for two days. Justices of the Peace Tatnell, Kelly and Whitney. Any, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a nigger by the toe. If he moves, let him go. Any, meeny, miny, mo. Hello, Mr. George Whitney. He's a chalky at the university. He teaches the classics, Latin. Yeah, I know Greek. what the classics are. Go on. Well, he lives in one of them colleges there. Oh, with his family? No family. Goes to church every Sunday, doesn't drink, doesn't even have a honey. Oh, there must be something, Tank. What does he do for fun? Well, goes to the pictures every Saturday night. These young men, these students, and they go for coffee afterwards at Tate's. Well, Tate's on Collins Street. Yeah. Well, it's quite appropriate that he teaches Greek then, isn't it? Are you all right? Here, let me help. Yes, sir. Here. Oh, yeah. oh that's very kind of you. Not at all. My name's Daniel. I don't know how blokes like George Whitney can look at themselves in the mirror. Poor bastards ought to be drowned at birth, I reckon. Gives me a funny feeling knowing I arranged the whole affair. <laughs> I made him fall in love. Sorry, that seat's taken. It's taken by me, George. And so are these. Georgie, Porgie, Puddin' and Pie kissed the girls and made them cry. But you're not likely to be kissing any girls, are you, Georgie? You bastard. Will the defendants rise? 
In the matter of the Crown versus Harold Stokes and Anne Charlotte Stokes, we find the defendants guilty. However, as this was not a unanimous decision of the bench, God only knows why, the penalty imposed will not be as severe as it otherwise might have been. Henry Stokes, you are hereby fined 25 pounds. And Charlotte Stokes, you are fined five pounds. Court is adjourned. What is going on here, Dad? A bloody fine. Stokes and his missus get away with a bloody fine. Thought you had a watertight case. Goods in custody. Well, obviously, Stokes has nobbled the bench. Dad or Taylor has. What, bribed the whole bench? It only takes one bad apple to ruin everything for us, James. So we just let him get away with anything now? Bombing houses, corrupting judges. The problem with you blokes is you play by the rules, then you look surprised when you get a kick in the nuts. What about you, eh? What about your arrest record? Meaning? Well, you've never laid a glove on Taylor. Why is that, Jack? Why are you protecting him? I'll bring him down before you do. Don't worry about that. Oh, is that right? Yeah, that's right. I'll do it my way, and when I do, I'll stick him up your sanctimonious asses. Want a couple of bob on number three in the fifth there, Fred? Bugger off, Brophy. Mm. What if I got my bookmaking ticket? Would you uh, see yourself as me penciler? You serious? Nah, probably not. I, I tell you, Roy Lauder, what do you reckon? She runs well in the wet. Yeah. Might be all right for a pun. Yeah, put a fire on for me. On the nose. Exquisite. All right, Jack, huh? Very funny how much. What, 10 quid? You're not going anywhere. 20 quid. I'm charging you, you little pipsqueak, so yeah. shut the fuck up. No, no, no. I'm going to be bailed in an hour, and I'll be back to the track by lunch. You know that. Not if I can't find a bail, Justice, in a hurry you want it. You're a bastard. You're a bastard! By the beginning of 1921, the Spanish flu epidemic was, by and large, considered to have passed. There were, however, still the occasional victims. And June Lorraine Taylor, aged seven months, was one of the last to succumb. She's dead, Liz. <laughs> Our little girl is dead. <laughs>
Every time we get close to him, he seems to give us a slip. Squizzy's running from rival gangs. If you want a war, I'll tell you when the time's right. Running from the law. Looks like the gloves are off. And running out of luck. Squizzy Taylor needs a lesson in respect. Next Sunday, meet the woman who steals more than his heart. Someone's going to end up getting killed. It might be you. New Underbelly Squizzy, next Sunday.